Hey everyone, welcome to another Lego fan video. I do fun, I'm your host Lego fan, and I do fun Lego videos. I have about 10 steps video, as well as Ben 10 videos. So, throughout Ben 10 Alien Force, there were a total of 22 villains that made their appearance. 90%, 99% of them are new. You might recognize one villain up here that has made a return appearance, but other than that, all were new villains. Actually, no, there are two. Sorry. So, this is 11 villains all together. I'll cover the next 11 in the next video. Um, and with that out of the way, like, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that YouTube algorithm stuff. And let's get started. I run this as sort of a quiz. You got 10 seconds to guess which characters of these, I'll name if they have multiple forms, um, is... The character that said that line, and what is their name? I might also ask for last name, as um, one of the characters is actually known by his first and last name. And I don't even know the order. For real this time, I actually don't know the order. So let's get started with our first one, which actually doesn't have a first line. And is actually the easiest one. Let me just move these two up here. It's actually the easiest one to identify. So, of these, which one is the pickaxe aliens? Ten seconds. Good luck. Oh, yeah. I should probably specify that um, if they don't have a first line, I'll give the name. And you have 10 seconds to name it, because I'm not going to say 10 seconds, good luck, and you have to figure out what alien, alien, villain I'm thinking of. As I said, these guys are the easiest one, because they're, they literally look like what they are named. They are aliens holding pickaxes. So, it's unknown what species they are. Um, they're kind of their own species. And they only appeared in Kevin's Big Score. They serve uh, under Volcanus, who we'll get to, uh, and serve as his minions in the episode, who took Kevin to see Volcanus, as well as mine some Tatanite off of him. And then, they, and then when Ben and the gang showed up, Ben and Gwen, they, they decided to fight off Gwen, which really wasn't a smart idea, but let's not go in that story. And they were all defeated. So they serve as a small army for Volcanus, who have pickaxes, which are very sharp and are strong enough to actually break through mana walls. They are also very sharp, and some of them are even electrified. They also have some mine cards in order to haul away goods that might be mined, and are loyal to Volcanus. However, they are weak on their own, not smart, and are not durable. As I, as we go further in with armies and stuff, you'll figure out that armies, uh, as I'm gonna call them, like if they, like if they have minions, these minions usually aren't strong or durable on their own. So the next ones also don't have a first line. Okay, okay, all these guys in one shot here. Um, so, they're, they're just not really named even, either. They're called zombies in the show. I'm using that in quotes. So, of these, which one is the zombies? Ten seconds. Good luck. So, again, they're not really zombies. They just got drained of their energy by Michael Morningstar, who, again, we'll get to him. And, really, they are human, who are just drained of their energies. They appear in all that glitters, being the followers of Michael Morningstar, obsessed with him to the point where they don't even know what is happening to them. If you look really hard, um, you can see, like, a little mark that shows that and you can see that a lot of them actually have multiple marks. That shows how many times Michael Morningstar actually bit them. In a way, bit them, or drained them, whatever. 
um, they don't know that their energy is actually being absorbed. They actually got obsessed with him. That their, their energy was slowly drained out, and in, in due time, they actually got in some of Michael's powers and decided to attack an energy plant. And they, but uh, they all got chased away, and after being knocked out by the team, later they appeared alongside Michael Morgstar. But rather than fight alongside him, they finally came to their senses and reabsorbed their energy from him, turning him into a zombie. So, uh, well, not a zombie yet, but into his human form. You'll you'll see. Michael Morgstar is a bit of a complex character. So they gained some of their abilities, like my, like Michael had, being energy absorption, and some of them are even pretty quick. They are also strong, strong enough to actually lift an electrical transformer, and usually will attack at horse, though not, though they may not. They are also pretty decent fighters, being able to hold their own, but they are not smart and they're not durable. Due to the fact that they are humans, and they, and even after being said they, uh, Quavisto is a conductor, they still decide to attack them with an electric attack, which does not work. And they can also appear to be weak and wobbly at times, so don't let that fool you. Ironically, it seems like we're getting all the ones that don't have first lines, then again, most of them actually don't, out of the way first. With our next one also not having a first line, that being the Mech Dragon. We're going to get to the dragon later on. He's not named, but yeah, there is this one. So of these, which one is the Mech Dragon? 10 seconds, good luck. So the Mech Dragon is this guy right here. So he is a robot first appearing in Bed 10 Returns Part 1, making a brief appearance at the end of the episode, waking up after Ben accidentally knocked over a suit of armor, sparking the to-be-continued sort of ending for Ben 10 Returns Part 1. Bed 10 Returns Part 2 picked up where that left off with... with where the Mech Dragon is chasing them throughout the castle before finally coming upon an empty hall, where they took a final stand against the Mech Dragon who was currently stuck. And, but he broke through in this exact shot here, and they took a final stand, and while Kevin, Magister Labrid, and Gwen took on the knights that were like, hey, what the hell are you doing in my castle? Ben decided to fight the dragon as his new alien, Echo Echo, and used his wall of sound, that, and not named wall of sound technique, to officially destroy the dragon, and, and once he was officially destroyed, he also got destroyed with his parts, making him officially dead. We also don't have a lot of abilities in this guy as well, other than the fact that he's very durable, and very strong, and very big. But his size can be a disadvantage as he can't enter small doorways, and he cannot stand static sounds as that was how he was defeated. We're finally getting to a villain that actually does have a first line, and this guy has two forms. So, this is his first line. So, of these, which two are the one that said that line? 10 seconds, good luck. So, this was the villain known as Volcanus. This is him in his armor as of Alien Force, and this is him without the armor. I never, this guy is my least favorite Ben 10 villain, mostly because he is just not really well designed, in my opinion, but again, personal opinion. 
So he is a Detrovite who first appeared in Kevin's big score, holding the hologram projector that Kevin wanted to give to Ben and the crew. But uh, Kevin tried to bargain with him, saying he's going to owe him. But after losing Rust Bucket 2 to Argent. But instead, decided Kevin will pay the debt by forcing him to absorb Tatanite forever. This will also pay off all his previous debt that Volcanus had and serve as a bit of a revenge because Volcanus got screwed over in that isotope scam that he mentioned because, well, he got trapped on Earth due to that and the plumbers are on him 24-7. But he was stopped and his armor was destroyed. He was last seen wallowing in the in his wells of all the tainted he got with Ben saying like, He's not worth it. He's happy where he is. Let's leave him to his riches. So he is one of the big heads of the alien criminal underbelly on Earth and knows alien tech and how to use it. He also has his pickaxe aliens and a flame gun that shoots out fire. He is also incredibly strong and with his armor on, he's also very durable. And is a pretty decent fighter. There are a few drawbacks for him, uh, like the fact that his species, and he himself, is not very smart. His army can also freeze up and be destroyed if it is frozen, and he's pretty much useless without his armor because you can see that he's kind of like a baby with a... With, he's sort of like a baby in big head mode with his without his armor. I never liked this villain. I'm just going to get him out of the way. That's all we really have on him. Our next villain up is a lady whose first line is Talk. What rotten kids. Go away. So of these, which two said that line? Ten seconds, good luck. So, as I said, it's a lady, which leaves only one uh, person. This girl right here. But you're probably wondering what her second form is. And that is this one. Right here. So we have her human form and her anodite form. So this villain is Aunt Verdona. Whoopsie. She is an anodyne first appearing in What Are Little Girls Made Of, appearing back on Earth to mourn for the loss of Grandpa Max, her husband, and discovered that Gwen has the spark. That is the fact that she is part anodyne, a little piece of anodyne. She tried to reason with Gwen and convince her to come with her to the anodyne planet, but she refused. And then, Verdona is like, fine, I'll take you by force, and tried to force her inner anodyte to come out by literally ripping off her skin. Or, yeah, uh, there's no other way to put it. She literally tried to do that. But she lost the battle and saw the arrows in her way, leaving, promising to return to check up on her every once in a while. She only made one more appearance. So... Given the fact that she's an anti, you can imagine how much power she has. She can teleport, manifest flowers, can't be attracted by a tracking spell. She also can go invisible. She's smart, she can fly or hover. She is, flash, she is fast, she has longevity, she is durable enough to withstand jet rays, laser blast, and even deflect it in a sort of way. I don't know how to describe it. She kind of put like a mana bubble on his tail, causing him to shoot, but it got absorbed. I don't know. Something like that. She can also repair broken things, forcibly cover bows, form a disco ball, and transform herself into an anodite. This makes her attacks become super strong. She also has magic hair down that can deflect Vanna and act similar to Ben's villain of Frightwig, where it can manipulate all sorts of things. She can also absorb and become mana, and undo any magic she has done. She can also break through mana shields. 
However, she is biased towards anodytes and consider other people inferior and can be distracted easily. She also could be persuaded after some time. Now we're getting to one of the more interesting villains on the list, that being this guy right here, whose first line is... Just a simple ha. Huh? So, of these, which one is the one that said that long? 10 seconds, good luck. So, this guy often goes back and forth between being a hero and being a villain. Though, in this case, he's kind of a villain. This is the villain known as Arjit. His species is unknown and first appeared in Kevin's big score and will be making a lot of reappearances as he's a constant villain, anti-hero sort of deal to Ben. So he told Kevin how to get the hologram that Kevin was after in exchange for Rust Bucket 2, which, after looking over it, decided to steal it and strip it of all the plumber gear. Ben managed to track him down and stop him with Echo Echo knocking him out and neutralizes his powers by gluing all his needles in place. I wonder how long that actually took, come to think of it. And after waking up, he realized this fact and warned the team of Kevin and left him behind in the alley to fend for himself. Good luck. So, he has a wide arsenal of guns like a laser gun, which he can shoot quite accurately, and he knows the criminal underbelly, being a, sort of a lackey for a criminal... For the criminal underbelly, and he knows alien tech and gear, how much it's worth, and how to use some of it as well. He also has a sharp tongue, for those of you not antiquated with that term, that means that he's a good liar. He also can shoot needles which can paralyze or knock out a person, and strong enough to actually get stuck in cement. He's also very durable, is fast, that can run on all fours, and can drive pretty well. But he's very greedy, and due to his sharp tongue, he's untrustworthy. He can also be hurt by his own needles, and these needles can be glued onto, the, onto him, preventing their use. Now we get into one of the main antagonists of the Alien Force series, whose first line is... Now, of these, which one is the one that said that line? 10 seconds, good luck. So that would be this guy, or this thing here. His name are the DN Aliens. Its species honestly depends on the host, though... 90% of them are human. We'll get to the other temp. We'll get to the other part later on. And first appeared in Ben 10 Returns Part 1, being the cannon fire for the hybrid used to inform the hybrid as to how their plants are working on Earth and take care of any issues that may come up. One tried to take out Ben in the rust bucket but fled after being blasted with a fire extinguisher. They also took part in the alien deal fight, tried to ba fight back, but they were all knocked out. In Ben 10 Returns Part 2, once again, where they were once again used as an army, and finally guarded and piloting the ship that was shown in the episode. But most, if not all, were killed in the episode that uh, was shown on the ship. Then, in Everybody Talks About the Weather, they built a circuit board to and a tower to chase the weather from hot to cold in that town. But they were all defeated, and their tower was destroyed. In Max Out, they took over Santa Mira to look over their operations and raise the Zeno sites, put on ID masks to cover their true looks, but most of them were sent to the Null Void by the end of the episode, though a handful did survive and collect the surviving Zeno sites. And then, in Plumber's Helpers, one appeared at the beginning being chased by Helen and Manny, and attempted to fight back but failed and was sent to the Null Void. So they could shoot tentacles out of their bodies and, could, and operate very well in cold climates. They can also operate a ship, are abnormally strong, have claws, are durable, 
They are very agile. They can climb vertically. They can fire a goo ball from their mouths, which is like right below the eye that you see there. They often are also equipped with ID masks or suits. These ID masks essentially make them look human. That's the way an ID mask works. They also have a gun that can transport people and objects to metal, though it might be ice, I don't know for sure. They are also, they are also pretty smart and some are great engineers. But their main weakness is that they can't, they can't stand extreme heat, like fire. They are also very gullible, can be knocked out with ease, can be restrained by mana and energy cuffs, lightning can make their ID mask faulty, and are often very cowardly. For our final villain that has no first line, we have the Xenocyte. Of these, which one is the Xenocyte? 10 seconds, good luck. So the Xenocyte is this guy right here. So clearly they're a Xenocyte, who first appeared in Max Out, one almost beat him Grandpa Max when he arrived, but was knocked out. Later, it was discovered they were being bred in a hatchery at Santa Mira to be shipped off elsewhere, but most were sent to the No Void by the end of the episode. But a few still survived and were put in a barrel to be used another time. So they are incredibly fast and inc and have advanced agility. They also move by their tentacles and are usually mass bred. They can also breathe underwater and often hatch underwater as well. I was unable to find a picture of their egg. They also latch onto faces and transform people into DN aliens, like the face huggers that you see in the Alien series, hence their name, Xenocyte. Like Xenomorph, get it? They are, but they can be knocked out with, with ease, and by special process, they can also be removed from their host. But it is very difficult to attempt. Now we're finally getting to the villain that I wanted to get out of the way. That being this guy, whose first line is. Of these, which three said that line? 10 seconds, good luck. So, this is Michael Morningstar in his human form, in his golden form, and in his zombie form, who will become a major player later on. In all He's a mutant human who first appeared in All That Glares, absorbing the energy of the local girls in the area in order to feed himself. And after picking up Gwen, he manipulated the entire gang into thinking he was good so he could steal Gwen and absorb her energy slash mana. But he failed and was left in a zombie form at the end of the episode, mourning his luck and his plumber's badge was destroyed. So he could fly and absorb mana, turning these people into zombies, getting more powerful the more he feeds on them. And the more he feeds on them, the stronger he gets. They also become, the girls also become more obsessed with him the more he feeds on them. He's also a good flirter, is rich, has access, had access to plumber bases, gear, modern center, and knowledge on plumber tech. He's also smart, could blast his mana outward, becoming stronger the more he feeds. He can also transfer his energy, has a golden form, making his attack strong enough to rip off Kevin's transformation and become fast. He's also durable, a good fighter, and has his zombies, but they're low, not loyal as much. But he leaves a golden trail whenever he flies, leaves a mark on his victims, is an arrogant narcissist, obsessed with his looks. If enough energy is drained, he too becomes a zombie, putting him in a weaker state, and can be caught off guard. The next villain up has his first line this. Of these, which one said that line? 10 seconds, good luck. So that is this guy, a forever knight, human who first appears in Ben 10 Returns Part 1, 
The one is orchestrating the deal wanted several dozen laser lances from Kevin and the DN aliens, disguised as humans, during the conflict a few got away with both the weapons and the money, leading to the group tracking them down. And then in part 2, they were cannon fodder fighting alongside the mech dragon after Ketra and Ben and the crew invaded in the castle. They proceeded to fight them, but they all lost and all their weapons were destroyed. Then in B9, they were under the rule of King Patrick and Sir Connor used as a small army throughout the episode. So I kept a few of the similar abilities that they had in the original series. Knowledge on aliens, alien tech, knowledge on regular tech, some are equipped with the staff with lasers, they are very durable, some are expert scientists, they are intelligent, some are equipped with a laser sword or regular sword and shield, they can run fast, some are good drivers, they are somewhat agile, some are equipped with an electronic base, some have dynamite with an alarm, they have laser lancers, they have knowledge on the criminal underbelly, they often are in an army, and some are decent fighters. But they can be knocked out with enough force, they usually don't know what to do without orders, they usually have slow reactions, and they are not as bright as one, one used a visibly damaged weapon. For our final villain of today, his first line is... I just like that line. Do you know his name? 10 seconds, good luck. So this is a hybrid. That's their species who first appeared in Ben 10 Returns Part 1, making a brief appearance at the beginning of the episode via a hologram to be formed as to the whereabouts on Earth and form the DNA aliens to kill Max, the leak. In Part 2, a commander appeared in the episode, revealed to be behind the illegal weapons on Earth, operating from his ship hidden inside a mine shaft. After he was revealed, he decided to move the ship and kill everything within 5 miles. This caused Ben to fight him, but he lost and was tossed off the ship. Ben then stopped him and destroyed the ship with him on it. Another appeared later on to warn us about how much danger Ben is actually in. Then Max out, one of them led the charge on the operation at Santa Mira, making sure no one finds out, and plans to send the Xenocyte eggs to towns and cities across the world, but he was stopped and sent to the Novoid with his base destroyed. So they have an army of DNA aliens, holographic projectors, work better in cold climates, are natural leaders, they are strong enough to lift humongous door and break mana, they are very good fighters, have a super jump, are durable, and own and operate ships that come equipped with, with town destroying lasers. But they too cannot stand extreme heat and have a god complex believing they are superior beings. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time when we cover the next the remaining Ben 10 villains.